Hey guys, we are in the basement. And today we're gonna do part number seven of the Pac-Man Cabaret restoration. That is right, can you believe it? We have done seven parts. Seven parts to this restoration. And today we are gonna focus on the control panel. That's right, you know what guys, and I cannot wait to see what happens here because if you remember, in part number five of this restoration series, we applied what was called a liquid mask over the silk screened artwork on the control panel and then we painted over that mask. And today we're gonna find out if that stuff worked and if we have artwork still on that control panel and I cannot wait to see what happens. And then also in this video, we're gonna put the whole control panel back together. We're gonna rebuild that joystick with a new grommet. We're gonna reinstall the buttons and the harness. And you know what? It's gonna be a lot of fun, but it's gonna be a lot of work, but we gotta do it and we're getting that much closer to finishing this restore. And I really think that we're gonna be able to finish it probably in two more videos. That's, I think, my plan. I think we're gonna finish it on part nine. But anyway, why don't we go upstairs? And by the way, we're not going to the garage today. It's just, it's not that cold actually, but we can do this kind of work in the house. So we're gonna go set up on the kitchen table and let's start get, start working on that Pac-Man Cabaret control panel. Okay guys, uh, all the metal parts have uh, dried. I painted them with a um, appliance epoxy, which I've never done before and it turned out pretty okay. Um, actually, actually, it looks really good. So we got all the metal pa parts painted right here. And uh, what we're gonna do now though, and this is the moment of truth, because th this is the control panel here. And if you guys remember, uh, the Pac-Man Cabaret, the Pac-Man Mini, had artwork that was silk screened in the front here, okay? And it had artwork that was silk screened in the front, and then it had an overlay like this that was on the top, okay? So some of the artwork was on a control panel overlay and the rest of the artwork was actually painted directly onto the metal. Now before I spray painted this, I applied a liquid mask, okay? And this is Divoli's liquid masking film. And I've never used this before, so I have no idea what's gonna happen here. And what we're gonna do now, now that it's dried, we're gonna remove the mask and hopefully see the artwork underneath. And what I'm gonna do, and again, I've never done this before, but I'm gonna take an X-Acto blade and I'm just gonna try to lift up this kind of rubbery mask here and uh, we're gonna see what happens. So hopefully we will get some results. Um, and uh, I'm actually kind of excited to do this and uh, so we're gonna do it right now. So I'm just trying to lift it up here. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. So you can see there I'm removing the mask and it has protected the original artwork. And uh, I'm getting a little jazzed here, guys. And so we just gotta find it. And you know, I did this. I used this mask really because I didn't wanna use a label and the reproduction uh, CPOs that Takeman made at Clove, you know, he hasn't made those in a while. So I really didn't have much of a choice here. If I wanted uh, to keep the original control panel, I basically had to destroy the original artwork and get a sticker, or try something like this, try to mask um, the original art and try to save it and uh, it's looking like this might have been a success here. So I'm just kind of taking my X-Acto blade and I'm trying to lift up this kind of rubbery uh, liquid mask. It's, it kind of behaves like rubber cement in a way. And I'm trying to do this in a way where I don't actually scratch the artwork. I just want to lift up that mask only. And I don't want to lift up the paint but I do think that this new paint I put on here, this, uh, this appliance epoxy, is pretty durable. So I think that's low risk.
You know, I'm just taking my finger and I'm just kind of trying to rub off whatever is left. And uh, so I think that's all of it for the Pac-Man. And uh, that, guys, looks really good. So now let's come in here and let's get the ghosts. And I'm just going to come in here with my X-Acto. And we're just going to lift and peel. And uh, I must say, this is a success. I don't want to jinx myself, but so far, it's looking like this. Oh man, this is awesome. Look at that. So we're just peeling off the liquid mask and holy crap is that perfect. And when I applied this, I did this in my last video, or actually two videos ago, it was uh, the Pac-Man Cabaret Restore, um, I believe it was part number five. I, I applied the liquid mask with a paintbrush and I did it very liberally, I, I applied a lot of it because I wanted it you know, to kind of be meaty when I removed it. I didn't want too thin of a, a film. I wanted it to be nice and thick so it would just kind of come off like it's doing now. Just trying to get all of the little remnants off here. And looks like we've got one more ghost here to go. And I think that's it. And what's funny here, uh, what, what, what I was worried about was that the paint would be higher than the original art. And actually, this is pretty smooth. So, I'm not getting that at all. It's actually pretty smooth in general all the way across. And uh, my God, look at that. That is a nice restored control panel overlay. It's all original. We saved the original artwork, and all we did was we sanded everything else, we masked off the original silk screened art, and then we spray painted it with an uh, uh, appliance epoxy, and then we let it dry, and then we removed the mask, and look at that. You can't beat that. That's all original. All right, so all we need to do now is put everything back together. I'm gonna put the overlay on, and uh, we'll take it to the next step. Sweet. Okay guys, I think what we're gonna do next here is put on the control panel overlay. Now this is a new old stock control panel overlay. I actually got pretty lucky here finding a new old stock one. Um, they do make reproductions of this if you go to, uh, I think it's, uh, well, the site is 2Bits, T-W-O-B-I-T-S. I think it, it might even be pacman.com. Um, they sell a reproduction of this. However, the copyright on it says uh, Namco, not Midway. And if you guys kind of know the story here, um, Pac-Man in the U.S. was originally distributed by Bally Midway out of Chicago. So they really didn't mention Namco at all on the game, even though the game was designed and, and, and made by, by Namco in Japan, it was actually released in the US by Midway. So all the original artwork all says Midway and all the reproductions that have been made in the last few years are actually licensed from Namco, by Namco, um, and has the Namco copyright because Midway is completely out of the picture these days um, in regards to Pac-Man and really Bally Midway doesn't really exist as a company as it did in the 80s. So anyway, we're gonna put this on here and this actually shouldn't be hard at all. This is gonna be a really easy control panel overlay to put on. Um, what I wanna do 
we kind of want to have it sit in, 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 its, in its place first uh, before we remove the adhesive back. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the buttons, the new buttons, and we're going to use these to kind of hold it in place, in the right place, on the control panel, okay? And uh, so if we were to go like this, and we're going to use our buttons to kind of line it all up. And, and I'm wondering if I should use this, the, the nuts as well to kind of help us out. Um, and I believe these are them. So yeah, I'm just going to throw the little carriage bolts in here to kind of really hold this in place on this side, okay? And what we're going to do now, and actually it needs to come down just a hair. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put all of the, um, all four carriage bolts in. And that way we know we really have this thing in the right spot um, before we remove, remove the adhesive uh, paper on the back. Okay, so that is the right spot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some masking tape and I'm, we're going to tape it down. We're going to tape down one half of it, okay? And you'll see how this works. And this, and this way of doing control panel overlays, you can really apply to side art and, and vinyl and all that stuff. Um, so let's make sure that we're, we're pretty much lined up, okay? And we are, and we're just going to tape it down. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and throw some tape on the back here just to, just to be extra safe. Okay, so we've got our uh, control panel overlay pretty much in the right spot, in the spot that we want it on. Okay, so now that we're happy with where it is, we are going to remove the carriage bolts from this side. And I'm going to put them back in my little box. And actually, I need to get some scissors. One second. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to kind of lift this up here. And we're going to start peeling off the waxy paper here to reveal the adhesive. And hopefully, you know, this is new old stock, so, okay. And then I'm going to take my scissors and we're just going to trim this nice straight line. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying my control panel overlay. Okay. And I'm just doing a little bit at a time. I'm going slow. Um, you don't want to get any air bubbles. And I'm just kind of rubbing it forward. Okay, and that went on there pretty nice. Okay, so now we have essentially one half of it on here and it's in the right spot. Okay, so now since this is in the right spot, you can see it's perfectly aligned with those holes. So it's right on the money. So now we can take our masking tape off and we have no fear now of it coming off and not being aligned properly because we already have half of it adhered. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this off. And we'll take our little carriage bolts off, put them back in my little cardboard, and we can pop those off. Okay, so now what we want to do is bend this back and we want to peel this paper back, okay? And now we're going to basically adhere the rest of it to the control panel. And again, we know it's lined up because we got half of it on here. Half of it is really stuck on here. And we're just going to go ahead and just now move this forward, revealing the paper as we go, and do the other half. And I'm just kind of making sure I rub out um, all of the air bubbles. We don't want any bubbles in this. But, you know, this is a very easy control panel to do. Um, some of them, not so easy. Uh, so we got this old paper on here and it just tore. So I got to carefully get it all off.
But yeah, this is new old stock, and this is kind of the risk of using the old stuff that you might get some brittle paper or glue. Oh, man, we got some that's stuck on here. Let's see if I can just kind of scrape it off with something a little sharper than my fingernail. Hmm. You know, this is probably not going to make a big difference if we just leave this little tiny bit of paper right here. But I really would like to get it off. There we go. So I got most of it off. There's just a fragment of it on there. I'm just probably going to leave it. All right. And it's on. Kind of rubbing it over, making sure we've got no air bubbles. And I don't think we do. Look at that. That is one sharp restored control panel. Oh, that looks good. Boy, does that look good. There you go. All right, so now I want to go ahead and start putting everything else back together on this control panel. Um, we're going to have to put the joystick back together and all that. So I actually have a diagram for the joystick that kind of shows me how to put it back together. So I'm going to grab that and I will be right back. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is put our joystick back together. And I went into the Pac-Man manual, which is very easy to find online. It's a PDF. And I don't really remember how I took it apart, so I printed out the page here. Um, showing the, how the joystick is assembled. And we're going to start here at the bottom, uh, which is this right here. And uh, so it looks like we have this little plate right here that's going to go on, and, I, and it goes on like that. And we're going to throw a couple screws in there to hold it. Now, I kind of need to remember which screws go where, and I really don't. So I, I think I'll just figure this out as we go here um, by deduction. <laughs> So I know we're going to need four of these for where that mates. And I think these are the right screws to hold this on. And uh, let's see, we've got those. Um, but yeah, putting this back together is not going to be a huge ordeal. But yeah, I'm pretty confident this these are the right ones right here. So let me get my this here. And uh, there's my nut driver. But, you know, using a little uh, electric screwdriver really makes a big difference. It just makes it go a lot quicker. And I use these little nut drivers. You can get these really cheap at, like, Harbor Freight or something, you know, five bucks. So, all right. You know what? I'm starting to wonder if these are not the right screws. Oh no, I got the wrong bit. This is not small enough. That's too big. This is the part of the video where we try all the bits till we find the right one. There we go. Okay. All right, so this is our little four-way restrictor right there. Okay, so let's take a look at our diagram. And uh, I know I need to put the leaf switches back on, um, which is this whole assembly right here. And I did take a picture of that because I wanted to make sure I got the wiring orientation right. Um, yeah, I think we should do that right now. Let me find my picture. 
Okay, so here's my photo. So we go like this, okay? And we have red, white on the bottom. So this uh, is gonna go like this. And uh, let's see, red, white. And then blue, white goes over here. And uh, so it looks like it goes on like this. Okay, and then these were, these went on with these little Phillips screws with this little metal plate, and we're just going to stick these in here, and then screw our leaf switches. Okay, and then this one is going to go on here, like so. So yeah, this isn't hard, you know, it's just uh, making sure you can find the screws you took off and just kind of following the diagram. Um, always a good idea to take photos. So we're just kind of going along here, putting the leaf switches back on, following the photo. What I'm most concerned about is how the switches are oriented on this metal plate. Because um, this metal plate has two sides. It has a flat side here and an open side. So I'm looking at the picture here at the flat side. Um, just to make sure when we put this back on the control panel that the harness... You know, the harness has been kind of in one direction all its life, so it's going to naturally want to just kind of fall into place. And uh, so I'm going to make sure that we, we allow it to do that by having this on in the right orientation. And I took all my screws that were in the Ziploc bag and just dumped them into a bowl to just kind of uh, keep myself organized. This one goes here. I'm going to screw it from this side. And if you remember, these plates, these metal plates were really rusty and grimy when we got them, when we undid the game. And I, I painted them black, and it, this is going to look really sharp when we get done. Okay. And then our last one is going to go on like so. Not hard, just take your time. And hopefully not lose any screws, here we go. Because that's the worst. You, you, get, you get into this and you're missing a damn screw. See if we can get in a little closer here for you. Okay, so we got that all together. And let's see, look at our diagram here. And the next thing I want to do is put the top plate, I think, on. 
Um, actually, on the top plate, we need to put the grommet back on. And if you remember, we have a new old school, uh, new old stock grommet. And I got this at GameGrommets.com. And I think, yeah, this is the new one. And we're just going to put it on like so. And I remember that these two little nipples were on the outside. And uh, this also uses these screws. One, two. Three and four. And let's get our nut driver. And we're just going to screw our, our grommet down. And, uh, you know, if you replace this grommet, you know, what this grommet does is the joystick goes to the center of it, you know, and it. If it's new and nice, you get a nice fluid motion. Um, the old ones will sometimes tear or be really brittle and this joystick will be stiff or sloppy or not return to center. Um, you can see this has kind of a nice spring to it. Um, so he makes these game grommets for all the Midway games, all the Wicko joysticks. Um, and I think his website is gamegrommets.com and uh, definitely recommend doing that. Okay, so let's see, now we wanna screw this onto here. I don't think there's any other internal parts that we need to worry about. Actually, the joystick, uh, let's think about that. Does the, because we're gonna go like this and then the joystick's gonna go through here. And okay, so we can put the E-clip. What I don't wanna do is close this up and then I can't get the E-clip in. But the E-clip's gonna be below our uh, leaf switches out here, so. I think I can safely start screwing these together. Joystick's actually, it's a little over-engineered. <laughs> There's a lot of parts to this, really. And its purpose is, you know, how it functions is actually pretty simple. Okay. All right, so let's see here. And then from the top, it's interesting, this diagram doesn't quite match what I took apart. Um, there's like an extra sleeve here, and I, it, my joystick was not like that. It was like this on the top, and then this is going to go in here like so. Okay. And then underneath, okay, so we're ready to put this on the piece of wood. Let me grab that real quick. And we got to put it on the wood first. This, this doesn't actually attach to the metal. The metal goes on the outside of the wood. So here's our wood. And we can probably put this to the side right now. Actually, we can't. So, um, so this is going to go through here like so. And I kind of know that I'm putting this in on the in the right direction simply because of where the harness is is sitting, um, because we've got the button, the leaf spring. Leaf switch harnesses are on this side, so this is this has to be the way that it goes in here. And uh, if I remember right, we had we had four of those holding the joystick in. 
with nuts and these go through these go through the top just like so so we're just going to drop those four in and then and on the reverse side we're going to throw our nuts like this And that's kind of what holds everything in. And uh, let's see if there's a nicer way to go about this. Now, when I remove these little nuts, I use my socket set. I might have to go get it. I'm not even confident I'm using the right nuts, but I think I am. There we go. And just kind of threading these on here by hand first. And then we'll tighten them up. You guys can see that. Okay, so now we want to tighten that up, and I think I'm going to use my nut driver for that. Actually, I'm going to need to get a standard screwdriver, one second. It's on the other side with our standard screwdriver. There's one. Three. And four. Okay, so the joystick is in. So now we can put the metal part around this. So I think that's going to be our next step. So let's grab our metal overlay and it goes on there like so and it's held in front here by two screws and I did paint those so I just need to figure out which ones they are and it should be these guys I think uh, I think they had a larger head yeah I think it's this one so I just need to figure out where this goes like great I think it might have been the smaller head ones. Yeah, it was. Because I've only got two of the small head Phillips, so it's got to be these. Okay. One, and then two. Okay, we've got those on, and uh, there should now be four carriage bolts that go through the top here. There's one, and of course I painted all these like I said before, and boy what a difference does that make. And one of these I remember was longer because it had a ground wire. Uh, 
Let's see. I'm just kind of looking at all my and all these. I want to make sure I'm using the right ones. Actually, I'm gonna pop. So I got two. Okay, so I've got actually four that are this long and three that are that long. I'm guessing that these four are the ones I need. Uh, no, look at over here. I got, okay, so I got four short and four long. So which ones go on the control panel? Uh, where else were these used? Hmm. Oh, they were used on the speaker grill. So I'm gonna guess the short ones are for the speaker grill. They gotta be. And the long ones are for the control panel. Does that make sense? Hmm, we'll find out, won't we? I bet you I could probably use either one and it'd be okay. I wonder how the short ones fit in here. Yeah, there's not quite enough meat. I'm, I'm guessing it's gotta be these long ones. Okay, looking pretty sharp, huh? So let's kind of turn this over and I just want to see, I, I remember there was a ground wire. Maybe I'm imagining that, nope, here it is. So this ground wire right here, and it's very common to find ground wires in the control panel. So that ground wire is gonna go right here. And then this one's gonna get two nuts stacked on top of each other with the ground wire in between. So I'm going to go ahead, I remember kind of just undoing these by hand because my nut driver isn't deep enough to get on here. It's funny, I'm inside right now and I'm sitting next to my wood stove and I'm sweating. Quite the contrast to the garage, huh? Alright, and then we'll put this ground wire in here, and then we'll put another one on top. I am putting these on hand tight right now. I might just go over them real quick with a wrench afterwards. These had washers. I don't remember. I don't think they did. Sure looks like they might have. This one right here, especially. I'm going to unscrew these real quick and throw washers on them. Okay, we got all the, uh, the nuts on here tight and I did throw some washers underneath them, which I think was the right thing to do. Okay, so now I need to uh, put the buttons on, okay? And here's the harness for the Leafs uh, switches. And, uh, oh shit, you know what? I, did I put this in backwards? Let's look at this again. I did. These definitely want to go like that. Ah, oh, shit. Well, that wasn't very good. All right, so I'm gonna have to flip this around. I actually put this on backwards because this, these buttons here want to naturally just go like this. They do not, under any circumstance, want to go over here. So I put that in upside down. 
Let me undo this and redo it. All right, guys, actually, I ended up having to take the whole thing apart to flip this around, and so now it's, it's definitely, these things are in the right spot. The joystick is facing the right way, so I had to take the, oh, the metal panel over off, the metal overlay off, which is actually okay, because I forgot to put the dust washer on here, and that goes right there, and that goes under the metal overlay um, between the, the joystick plate on the top here and the metal overlay is this dust washer. And this dust washer, nothing more than just a piece of plastic, it's round. Uh, I actually cleaned up all these plastic parts. These things were filthy. Um, I just soaked them in a, in a glass uh, with uh, you know some dish soap for, uh, for an hour or so. And um, so the dust washer, you can see that, it goes in the middle there. So you don't, I forgot to put that in there too. So now I got to put this back together. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this back on and we'll be right back. Okay, so I got it all back together and we're ready to put the joystick in. I already put the joystick in because um, I wanted to get it in through the dust washer right here. See that? So we're going to take the joystick, put it through here. And by the way, this plastic piece, which I did try cleaning, and that was the best I could do, but it goes with the fat part on the bottom. What's interesting is it's clear to me that this joystick must be a revision because it doesn't quite match the drawing. Um, and I, I believe I'm the first one to take this thing apart since it's been new. So, all right, so we're putting it in there like that. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. And then in the middle here, we have this piece, which does not appear on the drawing from the manual, so I really do think that they revised this at some point. Um, and I believe that it goes on like this, because this part here is what's going to hit the uh, four-way restrictor. And I'm just going to kind of take my thing like this, and if you could see that. And we're going to pull the joystick out a little bit, and we got to kind of thread the needle here. And it's going to be tight. Oh, shit. It looks like... This piece had to be in here first. Oh, God damn it. I gotta take this part apart again. <laughs> I gotta take these four nuts off real quick. Arrgh. All right, nothing is easy. We are learning as we go here, apparently. This is annoying. So I sure hope I can get these off without having to take the whole thing apart again. So I need to loosen this so I can get these two halves separated because this part needs to go in the middle of them, which I didn't foresee. Joy. All right, we got three of the four out. I probably can get this in there. All right, so we're gonna have to lift this up and sneak this guy in here. <sighs> Till he falls. Like that. That's how it goes. <sighs> yep, that's it. All right, so now I gotta put these back in. That could have been worse. At least uh, I'm able to, to take this apart without taking the whole damn thing apart again. God, that would have been annoying. Okay. And that is right, right? There's two ways that this can go on there.
Yeah, that's gotta be right, okay. And then once we get that on, then we need to put this guy on here. And this is the thing that hits this, the leaf switches when it goes around, like so. And that was held on with an E-clip, which I have right here, and we'll just pop that back on. And then our joystick is back together. Okay, there we go, see how it feels? And that feels great. And see how it springs back to center? Okay. All right, so now all I need to do is just put these switches back on and we are done. And these are kind of, I'm guessing it goes like this. This is the way it kind of naturally wants to sit. So let's get our uh, our new new uh, buttons. Put them through the front here, and they pop out the back. And these are held on with these these pal nuts, which are like just giant. Uh, I don't know if they're aluminum or what. Just kind of punched washers, and we're going to screw those on. All right, there's one, and let's go here with the next one. I usually just tighten those by hand and then just take my pliers here and just twist it like a quarter turn or so to snug it up. You don't want to go too nuts on this because it's metal on plastic. Okay, the only thing left really is to screw the harness down and there's two screws. Let's see, which ones were they? I'm guessing... Guessing they were. Mm, they gotta be these guys. Okay. And you can see I'm kind of deducing which screws go where just by the number of them. And there's only two of these, so these gotta be the ones that held these in. And we're just screwing. We're just screwing back down the little uh, harness holder clips things that uh, that screw to the wood to kind of just keep this neat. Okay, that's it. We are really done, and uh, the view from the front is pretty damn sexy, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that. Can you imagine? I mean, think about what this used to look like before we started. Look at this thing. It's perfect. And it's all new old stock, overlay, original control panel with original artwork. Reproduction buttons, yeah, they're supposed to be red and white. Isn't that weird that they use those? Um, there is one last thing I want to do, though. We're not really completely done. I want to clean the leaf switches, and let me see if I can find some... Uh, you want to use, use, like, a business card or some cardboard um, to clean these, and it's actually really easy to do. And you don't want to use sand sandpaper, and what you want to do is just take a piece of cardboard... Uh, a business card works really well. I just tore off a piece of a box over here. And you just kind of want to put it in between the leaves, like so. All right, we're just going to put it in between the contacts. You can see that. And all you're going to do is just push down, like so, and then pull out, okay? And you're just going to clean the contacts with this cardboard. And it just makes the game play better. And I'm just putting the cardboard in between the contacts, pushing in, pulling out, pushing in, pulling out. And uh, I don't think these were that dirty, to be honest, but uh, we'll do it nonetheless. And I'm just kind of pushing in, pulling out. 
And we could do it on the start buttons too, why not? And we just kind of go like so. And that's all it takes. All right. Now we are officially done with the Pac-Man Cabaret control panel. And uh, I would say that is a huge success. It, it looks fucking beautiful. I mean, when we get this on the game with the rest of the restored game, this thing is gonna pop. So I cannot wait. We are getting so close. So guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Why don't we go back down to the basement and we will continue this next time. All right, guys, there you have it. That was part number seven of the Pac-Man Cabaret Restore. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And man, holy cow, does that control panel look awesome. Man, I cannot wait to get the whole game down here. I'm, I'm actually getting really excited. I'm, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We are almost done. And I think we can finish this game in two more videos. I think by part number nine, we will be done with the Pac-Man. So anyway, that's it for me this time around. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. And I will see you guys next time. And also, check out my podcast, Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com and Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com. Anyway, that's it. We're gone. We're out of here. Happy holidays, and we'll see you guys later. <laughs>